Hello and welcome to my review of the Robin 80th Anniversary 100 page Super Spectacular number one. That's a long title here. And this is obviously going to be a book that I thought was going to celebrate all 80 years of the Robin character. And I'm going to talk about is this worth getting if you're a fan of Robin, if you're not, things like that. Uh, I think that this is more focused on the characters that were Robin. More so than being a celebration of the mantle of Robin, and I think that that might throw some people off, but you end up getting a lot of creative teams, a lot of writers and artists back on this book doing stories from errors that they did, and now the problem is... You're not going to have some of the original ones that say did the Dick Grayson deal because they're dead. It's too long, 80 years. Uh, But I think that you'll get enough out of this that I do think it's worth buying. It's $10, so it is expensive. It's 100 pages there. You get a lot of stuff here. And each of the stories has something to kind of grab onto. But one of the things as you start out, you have Marv Wolfman and Tom Grummet on a story that's Dick Grayson and, and Batman, Dick Grayson, Robin. Uh, You're ending up having them fight Zaz, which is a little off in the timeline. But in the meantime, this story pretty much is Dick Grayson deciding that he's 18 years old. He's too old to be with Batman as Robin in that silly outfit that no 18 year old would be caught dead in and then decides to go off to be Nightwing. And that's nice if this was a Dick Grayson celebration. This is a Robin celebration. The first story is Dick Grayson deciding he's not being Robin anymore. It seems a little off and that at the beginning you end up having a lot of this that seems a little off. The next story is a Chuck Dixon and Scott McDaniel Nightwing story, not a Robin story, a Nightwing story taking place during Cataclysm. And it's nice. It's awesome to have Chuck Dixon and Scott McDaniel back doing Nightwing, especially with that side paneling of the credits, which is very reminiscent with the, you know, even the whole logo and stuff, very reminiscent of the run. But still, you end up just having a Nightwing story. That's okay. It's a little surface level of him helping people during Cataclysm and saving a couple who are almost dead from their car going off a bridge that's coming down. In the end, the connection to Robin is they say, hey, what should we call the kid? Can we name him after you? Just make it Robin. Like, all right, you don't want to tell them your secret identity, and nobody wants a kid named Nightwing. Uh, Then you move on, and you continue again this theme. This is another Nightwing story, Nightwing and Titans story. Yeah, it is done by Devin Grayson, which is cool because he did a lot of Titan stuff, art with by Dan Jurgens. But this is a Nightwing story facing off against Damian, Dark, and Hive. And then in the end, you get a mention of a pizza party. Uh, But where's the Robin? Now, again, I've talked to some people, Jay from Canada out there, a little shout out, where he likes this because it's showing how the characters learn from being Robin to go on to be better. But this is an 80th anniversary of Robin. This is a celebration of a mantle, a celebration of a specific character. And we're already a couple stories in and we barely get Robin. And the Robin we got so far is a Robin who decides not to be Robin. Uh, You continue then with a Grayson story with Tim Seeley, Tom King, and Michael Janine. And I liked Grayson when it came out. I loved it for a long time. Uh, The problem is not a lot of people did. I used to have to fight people to like this book and try to give it a shot and things like that. Now, in the meantime, you do get what made that pretty cool in a story where Dick Grayson is teaching Skull Girl Paris how to be a hero and going back and thinking back at what Batman taught him and doing the opposite. And it's kind of a cool deal of tying that in, but still it's a Grayson story. People who even like Nightwing after the whole forever evil, they boycotted this Grayson and you don't even get the greatest hits. You do have some fun. You do have some great set pieces, some great art with that, but you don't end up getting Jim and Juan, a reference to the butt cheeks of Dick Grayson, also something that Paris was really into. And you don't get the Agent 37 song. And I kind of wish that we would have gotten a little greatest hits, though you get some craziness. But again, having this story in and knowing because I fought people about it, trying to get them to read Grayson, having this in is an odd deal and has nothing really to do with Robin except him thinking back at the lessons he learned. And after reading this, I really thought we were going to get a Rick Grayson story from the current Nightwing that people hate as well. And people didn't like Grayson as much as they don't like Rick Grayson now. So it was odd. 
We then continue with a Judd Wynick story. You're going to get Judd Wynick, who did Under the Red Hood, doing a story and more, but he's a Red Hood guy doing a Red Hood story. That is cool. Uh, I kind of wish that you would have Doug Mankey on art. He ended up doing most of the art in Under the Red Hood. And also, you end up having uh, Shane Davis did some of that. But it's Dustin Nguyen. He does a good job. And so you end up having this whole deal where it is Jason Todd having uh remembering back in the day he ended up giving the watch bruce wayne's father's watch to him saying hey here you go here was thomas's watch uh it's a gift to kind of be nice to bruce but it wasn't fixed he tried to fix it he couldn't get it quite right and then you end up going now that he has fixed it in the current deal and i like having jason todd have some nice moments with batman even though they're not really talking per se in the current deal it's him leaving it for bruce bruce finding it and you know hey happy birthday buddy it's very reminiscent though of a new 52 story that i really liked where you ended up having damien find the last pearl of martha wayne's pearls and giving it to his father during the anniversary of the deaths things like that that was pretty cool and if you did want to go back and read that which i do suggest you do it's really good it is the new 52 batman and robin number 14 uh you continue with adam beechen and freddie e williams doing a tim drake story which is awesome they did a lot of tim drake robin the robin book all of that so that's awesome and i love freddie williams art and this is probably my second favorite story in the whole book the the one we just talked about the red hood one that was my favorite this is probably my second because again you're dealing with a robin you're dealing with a tim drake who in a story where he tells his guidance counselor that he wants to be a you know in law enforcement and his guidance counselor looking and of course because tim has a little extracurricular activity as robin he hasn't been able to do a lot of extracurricular activities for school so you get that kind of Back and forth with the guidance counselor saying, you know, hey, you got to help at risk kids. Maybe that would be good for your resume and then see that that's pretty much what he does all the time in an awesome panel where you end up having him punching the crap out of Scarecrow, saving some kids. But you'll get you should go and join a sport. And then you see him training with Batman, stuff like that. And it was well done. I thought that this was a good story to just show. Uh, you know, Tim Drake, what he was going through, what he, that he wanted to be something else, things like that. Uh, then you continue on speaking of wanting to be something else and going on. You go to James Tyne and, and Javier Fernandez doing a Tim Drake prequel to the detective comics of Rebirth. You see that when this was going on before he joined the Gotham Knights, he ended up going to all the Robins and asking what they thought. One of the things that kind of, you know, piqued my interest was when he goes to Nightwing, and I'll tell you, I'm not a huge Javier Fernandez fan. I know some people or a lot of people like him. I don't. This kind of shows. I hate his faces. But he ends up where Nightwing tells him, you know, the newer generation of people and heroes, they're going to need somebody to mentor. And you're such a good job. You're, you're, you're one of those guys who should do that. Maybe this is a little hint at what we're going to get with 5G or whatever they're going to call it now, even if they're going to do it. That a Tim Drake's role in that will be as he ages up, he'll be a big mentor to say the new Teen Titans or, you know, even Luke Fox, who is supposedly going to be Batman, things like that. But I kind of thought that that was neat. And it ends with Damien having a nice moment, kind of doing the way he does trash talking Tim because they, they kind of have issues. He ended up having Damien take over for Tim to be Robin there. And, he ends up telling him, you got to do what you think is best. Do what's good for Tim Drake. It was nice advice. And you go off for him joining into that detective squad, the Gotham Knights. And so all this is you're celebrating something from a couple of years ago. I don't know. It just seems too soon to be celebrating when you're not getting enough of actual Robin stuff going on. Then you get a Stephanie Brown story. She wasn't Robin that long. But I didn't mind this. It's pretty surface level. It's nothing that's going to wow anybody. But what I did like, it it ends up being Amy Wolfram writing. Not a great connection to this, but you end up having Damien Scott on art. And I do like Damien Scott's hip hop style art is what he calls it back in the day. And one of the things that he ended up doing was the Cassandra Kane Batgirl book. And at points you ended up having Stephanie Brown robin show up in that so i thought that was cool but the story itself is about her not fitting in her costume having a wedgie kind of a little jokey uh but then going off and fighting firefly 
kind of doing things her own way, which Batman doesn't like, but in the end, them deciding that she should be a Robin, though she was only a Robin for a tiny, tiny bit, but she should be a Robin and she could do things her own way. Uh, here is a panel from back in the day, Damien Scott from Batgirl with Cassandra Kane that shows you that the art style is just the same. And I, I do like that art style. Again, some people don't. Some people do. I love it. Uh, we then go off to a Super Sons issue with you, you have Peter J. Tomasi. And it's a shame that Patrick Gleason is over with Marvel because it would be awesome to have him back just for this little deal. Uh, Jorge Jimenez does a decent job here. And I know I'm a, I'm a fan. I, I go back and forth, but you end up with a story where John is writing a, a, a paper for school. My best friend, it ends up being Damien. You do have some funny things because if you know, if you don't, it, the Super Sons book kind of got canceled, derailed, had problems because Bendis came and he aged up John. You can't have the Super Sons then with an age John. It felt wrong. He went off to the Legion of Superhero book. Well, instead of de-aging or aging him, he ends up de-aging him here. Peter J. Tomasi de-ages John with red kryptonite to make him a baby. And that was kind of funny. I think that that was a shot at Brian Michael Bendis. And you even have them at the end. They're talking, they're laughing, and they're eating some burgers. But because Damien is a vegetarian... You do end up with the idea that you look, there's no meat on that burger, something again that Brian Michael Bendis messed up when they were eating hot dogs in his last story of the Super Sons before John fully went off to be in the Legion of Superheroes. So you end up with some shade being thrown. Uh, the last story is Robbie Thompson, who is taking over fully the Teen Titans book with Damien. And this is a setup for a Teen Titans annual. That always throws me off when you end up having a celebration, especially 80 years, and you're just using it to set up a story to go on to the whole thing going on now and also a Teen Titans annual. I don't like the art by uh, Ramon Villalobos at all. I'm not a big fan, though. It does kind of get me a little reminiscent of Chris Burnham's art in the uh, Batman Incorporated book where Damien ended up dying in. But yeah, you end up having... Batman and Robin fighting Quietus and a Quietus army. It's kind of odd. The last we saw Quietus was in the Silencer series, and he was just a head. He had no body. I guess somebody gave him his body back. Uh, in the end, it's more of the secrets that Damien's been doing with wiping minds, having a you know dungeon in the Titans, the, the whole Mercy Hall. Uh, and so it's going to come to a head. It kind of reminds me of what happened in the Red Hood deal where you had the issue number 25 where Batman pretty much went and beat the crap out of Jason Todd for supposedly trying to kill Penguin. But again, does this serve a 80th anniversary to set up an annual that's coming up in the future? Who knows? But you get a little a little look at Robbie Thompson on his own writing the character of Damien, maybe get you excited. But yeah, I'm, I'm surprised we didn't have a Kerry Kelly story. I, I really am. Uh, that would have been cool. I have Frank Miller do something. We didn't get that. Uh, but my biggest problem here is not having enough Robin stories. You end up having the characters that were Robin kind of progressing on and seeing what they do later. But I want it more of just classic Robin stories and maybe even getting a story where you get all of the Robins out and about doing something together in one like one last hurrah. Get the gang back together. Everybody dressed kind of like this here. Spread page would have been awesome. But overall... I think that this was worth it. I think that there's enough here. You get a lot of these older guys and gals coming back and they're writing stories of the characters they did. I just didn't get enough Robin to go gaga about it because it was an 80th anniversary, but I had some fun with this. I got to see Nightwing. Nightwing's my favorite character. Dick Grayson in particular being my favorite character. Heavy on that. Dick Grayson after being Robin. Um, but... I give it a 7.5. I'm not going to go hog wild with it just because it's an anniversary or a celebration because I think that it needed to be more of an anniversary and a celebration of a particular character. We didn't quite get that, but that's my review. I hope you all enjoyed that. Maybe go check out the book, see what each of these stories is all about. Like I said, the Red Hood, the Jud Judd Wynick Red Hood story, my favorite then you end up the Adam Beecham, Freddie Williams deal with Tim Drake. I like that. I like most of them enough. It's just some of them were like, well, why is this going on? I mean, you have the Devin Grayson Titans story, which I like Devin Grayson. I wish he would do something now 
with some of the current books and whatever, but you end up getting a Titan story with Nightwing. It really wasn't anything to do with Robin, but that's that. I'm not going to bitch and moan about that anymore. Hey, thanks. And if you like this video, please like it down below. Also, subscribe to the channel. It'd be awesome. And look in the description of this and all the videos on the channel to get all sorts of links to the DC podcast, DC website, the Marvel podcast, Marvel website, and a bunch of other things, including our Patreon, where you can go and support us for these videos and everything else we do, plus get a ton of other shows to check out. But thanks, everybody. And I'll talk to you later.